Thank you so much, sir. Um, what, how are you looking at this demonetization process? Are you looking at it as an opportunity to buy stocks which have corrected, which had run up too much? Or are you going to wait and watch for a while? No, I, uh, we are very positive on uh, after effect of uh, demonetization. And uh, we feel that in India and globally also, a reset button has been pressed. So because of that, there is uh, confusion and there is a lot of noise everywhere. But if you look at uh, the benefits, then uh, uh, one finds that uh, all that will fold out uh, very soon and uh, that will uh, make India a very interesting buying case. For example, uh, even uh, within 10 days, uh, what we find is that banking sector, their deposits have gone up and because of that, deposit rates are coming down. And now, with, uh, this will be followed by decline in lending rate, and that makes investment uh, uh, affordable for many of the companies. And uh, if you look at uh, globally, the situation looks slightly different, where in uh, US rates are going to move upwards. Mm -hmm. And so, in India, if uh, interest rates are coming down, then equity return should be improving. Uh, which makes uh, it a very interesting uh, uh, place where uh, people, uh, they, they may switch to equity side. Mm. Uh, coming to sectors, if you look at banking sector, uh, because of demonetization, there's a lot of pain. There are long queues, people don't have currency, they don't have cash. But uh, this is pushing people to move towards e-wallets. Mm. And we feel that e-wallets, payment banks, and banking system Right. All these are going to benefit in a very big way in a very short period of time. Mm. Uh, in uh, our local market itself, we are finding that many shops who are not accepting uh, credit card, they are accepting credit card. So because of this, uh, uh, the word demonetization, I feel that uh, the economy is getting monetized because the cash was keeping people mm. away from the official market. Mm. And therefore... Uh, if you look at uh, corporate earnings and all such issues there, you'll find that uh, the transparency level will be much higher. Mm -hmm. I hear many people talk about uh, labor market where they feel that uh, uh, the cost may go up and all such things. But I feel that uh, uh, what you are paying to people, that will become more transparent. Mm -hmm. And when the uh, workers are being paid in cash, then you are not sure how much being, is be actually being paid and how much is being uh, siphoned out. So overall, I feel that uh, the leakages in the system, mm. that will also reduce significantly. There will be much more transparency, and because of that, uh, costs, rather than going up, they will come down. Mm. But having said that, in the near term, the ones who will feel pain are the ones who are exposed to rural markets because there the cash economy has to move into... Uh, the electronic or e-economy right. uh, uh, and uh, so if it takes two three months during that period sales and uh, receivables everything will be uh, slightly affected mm. uh, having said that uh, uh, we have seen in India that whenever such challenges come we move very fast to adapt to the new realities right. and uh, I recall that in India we didn't have a phone when I came to Bombay in 88, there was a seven year waiting period for mobile, uh, sorry, uh, landline phones. Yeah. So from no phones, India moved into mobile phones. Mm. Similarly, from 40% uh, cash economy or 25% cash economy, we'll become an economy where payment systems will be very good and comparable to uh, very good ones in the world. Right. Uh, sir, let me take each of these points one by one. Uh, you said that the deposit uh, levels have gone up sharply in banks. Uh, ever since this demonetization or delegalization of the 500,000 rupee notes have taken place. But those are forced deposits. I mean, it has to be done. Without that, uh, the, all the cash that you hold has to be sent to a, put into a bank and there are limits to your withdrawal. So it's not as if it's a secular deposit rate growth which is going to stay out there because there's no, there's no law which stops you from holding cash. If 84% of the total cash, 84 to 87% of the total cash is in 500,000 rupee notes, if 45% of GDP is in informal sector, if 90% of the people employed are in that space, then uh, that cash is going to go out. It's going to be used again. 
So to say that these deposit levels are going to stay, uh, how feasible is that and how long will it be? No, for example, if you look at uh, uh, a lot of this money, uh, it was not in the official system itself. A lot of this was not uh, being used for tax payments and uh, or tax paid incomes. All this was hidden income. We feel that the official economy, the size of that, that will grow, which may result in reported GDP growing, uh, and as a, and and maybe the output remains same, mm -hmm. but the GDP number will look much higher because a lot of things why, which why is not that, being sir? captured. Because, you know, the entire GDP process has two sides, right? I mean, you would know that much better than me and probably be able to explain to us slightly what you mean. Because there's a consumption side, there's an income side. So the difference between the two when you look at gross value added and what is looked at from output side is the discrepancy. Now, the point is that that discrepancy might reduce, but the GDP number from both sides should be the same. Consumption, total output is the same, whether you look at it or not. No, it's... No, certainly the output side, there are many of the activities, they are not captured. Whatever you not, don't capture, mm. uh, that uh, remains underreported. Mm. So, uh, very soon we'll find that uh, the cash economy, which was not reported, mm. uh, all that part will become part of the system. And with uh, GST coming in, all this fits in very well and uh, it will have positive impact. So you're saying that uh, the let's say there is a person in rural India who earns about on an average about let's say a family income of about ten thousand rupees a month, which is actually a decent uh, position to be in in rural India. They will actually operate and uh, through the banking system, and therefore once they operate through that banking system, it'll come into it'll be captured as an actual output or an actual service and therefore yeah. the GDP will show a higher level. So you're, you're saying that even the poorer people who provide a particular service, yeah. because we know that a large per, uh, amount of employment in India has actually come through yeah. self-employment, they will also now, yeah. over a period of time, go through the banking system. That is what you're saying. Certainly. Urban informal sector, there, whatever value addition takes place, large part of that is underreported. Mm. And many people, they are not banking, not because they don't want to be part of banking system, mm. but because they have not been exposed to this. Yeah. Now, because of this pressure, uh, even my servant came to me and asked me to set up a wallet for him because right. uh, he wants to transfer some money. Um, so, uh, um, you know, you were talking about the fact that perhaps the agri-facing uh, um, industries are going to be affected a little bit. Could you just break that up a little bit for us? No, I'm saying that for a quarter or so, there could be a problem in rural India because uh, for them to transition to uh, wallets and electronic uh, mode may take some time and the cash reaching there may take some time. So there... Uh, uh, there could be some difficulty in the short term, but uh, if you look at farming activity, their uh, use of 500 rupees note has been allowed. So, so I think there that transition will have more pains than urban area. But having said that, I find that uh, even uh, in rural area, uh, uh, people adopt to technology very fast. Mm. And recently, with their mobile phones, a lot of them they have been using WhatsApp and other things to keep in touch with their families. Right. So, so I feel that uh, this pain of not having currency, it will force people mm. to use e-payment modes and uh, that's going to be very healthy but uh, the pain will be felt in uh, rural India plus in real estate sector where uh, I think the element of cash uh, accounted and accounted was uh, high. So everywhere the reset part mm. where the pricing will be reset the demand supply mismatch. If you look at supply of luxury apartment was more than uh, what was uh, what the real demand will be going forward, right. and so that mispricing will be corrected. So once all that is done, then certain sectors will uh, bounce from there. But uh, this uh, entire trend will be very healthy for uh, most of the sectors. Most important being banking, fintech, and. Uh, 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 payment banks, all these will 
find ready buyers as and when they keep uh, expanding their services. Uh, I think uh, after this, uh, there'll be more, uh, uh, um, I think, resources with government for uh, propping up uh, the infrastructure-related activities. Mm -hmm. So overall, a lot of good things will happen because uh, there'll be resources with banks, there'll be resources with the government, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that, that is what is going to unfold. Right. Sir, you know, a lot of people are also talking about the informal sector which works on low margins and uh, those low margins are there because they don't pay taxes. Part of that will fold up. Do you see a formalization, consolidation in many of industries? No, what is going to happen is in India, as I mentioned, reset button has been pressed. Mm -hmm. So the ones who will not adapt to the changing environment, mm -hmm. they will become a part of history. And uh, we are seeing at corporate level also a lot of uh, mergers, acquisitions and consolidation, all that is taking place, whether you look at any, any sector. Yeah. It's happening because balance sheet of many companies is bad or business is good. So wherever business is good, balance sheet is bad. Mm -hmm. There will be... Uh, there will be solutions coming through various uh, structures, uh, maybe PE, maybe uh, sale of business to someone who has more cash. All that will happen. Coming to urban informal sector, mm -hmm. there uh, I feel that there are a lot of malpractices mm -hmm. and the reported profit of those sectors is uh, after uh, taking a lot of uh, uh, profits in cash. So there again, what is going to happen is in some places the cost may go up, right. but in most of the places, the leakages, they will have to reduce significantly. Mm -hmm. I'm told that in many of the urban and formal uh, activities, uh, whatever is the amount shown against uh, uh, the payment to workforce mm -hmm. is not the actual amount, it is uh, much higher. Right. And a large part of it is pocketed by the people who are running those operations or right. uh, all such things. I, I feel that uh, there there will be more transparency, and uh, it's not that uh, that sector will disappear. The way they do their business that is going to change. Right. Uh, the workforce uh, there because of more transparency, labor contractors and others they will not be able to uh, have a big margin there, right. and because of that the workforce will have more disposable right. income, which is going to be very good for consumer companies. Right. Uh, so, so there'll be uh, many such things because of transparency. Right. Uh, very interesting uh, there, the view that you're putting out. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Pleasure talking to you.